Hello and welcome to the Entrepreneur's Journey. I'm Andy Bryan and I'm delighted to bring to you today's show. Today's show is all about the journey to your soul. And I believe in some ways in, in a very different way than, than Nicole. I very much help people connect with their soul. But I would say over the past two, three months, I've known Nicole for quite a while now. But um, over the past two, three months, Nicole's really allowed me to connect with my soul in a, in a much different way and unique way, which has really been a real honor and privilege to, to for her to be able to to share, you know, her journey with me and, and help me go through some of the challenges that I've been facing so that I can connect with my soul a bit more and, and, and make more of a transition in my life. So today we have a pleasure to speak to Nicole to find out about her journey, her story, and really what's led her to doing what she's doing today. I created a brief uh, trailer video, an introductory video, um, but for those of you who don't know, uh, Nicole writes an, an amazing uh, blog as well called Nature's Wisdom, which I'm sure she'll talk about here today. And she's got a new book coming out as well. But I won't tell you what that is because uh, Nicole could tell you what that is a bit later. So, <laughs> so Nicole, um, before we jump into your story and uh, find out more about you in terms of your journey, tell us a bit more about yourself at the moment and who you are and what you're doing. Well, uh, it's uh, I'm just a, a very, very regular, uh, ordinary woman that just loves to connect to who I am through nature. And I have the privilege now and the amazing honor to be able to share uh, my passion through some writing and through future projects that are coming in my life, which I'm gonna I'm gonna get into it later. But it, it was it that's why I call it, it's a journey, and I love it's been a journey. It took me a long time to own that part of me and to finally show up with all that I am as this very regular, ordinary woman that hopefully will help people discover the extraordinary in being ordinary so that's kind of uh, i love it i love the way that was put you know i think uh, each that's why i love that the the um the entrepreneur's journey in a way because it's it's all about like connecting with who you are and 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 really embracing that fully you know that's that's truly what it's all about and that's why i love to love to share with people and that's why i love to hear people's stories like yourself so I know, I know from speaking to you that you've always had that connection with nature, connection with your soul in some respect. But I also know that it wasn't always, it wasn't always bright and shiny. It wasn't always, it was fabulous, you know. So let me ask you, was there, was there a time in your life that I believe everybody has a time in their life when uh, sometimes they're at odds with the world, they're not happy with where they are, and um, there is that despair and disparity there. They look to seek a bit more purpose, a bit more happiness. And um, and that's really this, always the start of our journey, I see. Yeah, yeah. Well, there, there's a, there are severals because, and you're right, nature's always been a part of my journey. Um, there's several, thinking back on the journey, I can spot several places where nature was definitely... Uh, uh, it, 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 at, at odds with my life. Uh, I, although I connected to who I am uh, through nature, I didn't necessarily bring it into my life where I, I go to nature, spend time there, feel amazing. And then as soon as I left nature, my life changed and I wore a different um, mask basically. Um, and, and so there, there are many, many uh, places in my life that are like that, but I, where I can honestly say um, where it became really like a, a, a call um, to action basically was basically when I was in, in, in Ottawa, uh, in the city here, and um, I, needed, I needed to get away from the city. I needed to reconnect to this deep place uh, of, of being in and around nature. And, and I always say, and you know this, Andy, from our conversations, I've always said nature is my best mentor, my, my, my most supportive teacher. 
and it's always been there. So in, I could uh, probably say around 96, I left the city and, and basically uh, pulled away from society almost and, mm -hmm. and lived in, in the forest, in, in an area. I moved to Mont Tremblant in Quebec, uh, in deep forest, deep woods. And, and literally, like, I, I had running water and electricity, but I was, yeah. I was far from everybody. And um, I just delved into connecting to who I am. That's kind of where it all started, basically. So looking back at your place, like uh, in Ottawa, where you were then, did you feel it in some ways lost in the city, you know, not being able to connect with who you were at that time? I could. I was. I was uh, definitely disconnected. There was. There was like being in the city. There. There was. I was at a point where it's like I didn't. I couldn't find me anymore, and not just I couldn't find Nicole. I couldn't find that part of me that calls myself I am. There. There was no. There was a complete different. There was. There was the Nicole because I when I was in the city, all that there was was people. And people's view of how or how I should live, how I should be, how I should, and I couldn't define who I I want, who I I am, mm -hmm. uh, in a way that I felt comfortable in it. So I had to pull myself away and 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 just kind of live in the presence of my best mentor. Excellent. So there's always a, there's always someone that, that gives you that divine inspiration that divine motivation to, for you to make that shift to make that change you know and you say nature was your calling to to make that shift and change in your life was there anybody that was an inspiration that 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 might have uh, led you to to seeking back um nature's wisdom it's it's um i i would probably say my dad uh just from his love from his serenity of of showing us how he he's always been passionate about nature he's always been um uh very close to it and it's always been a huge part of his life and um I, yeah that that would probably be uh his love of it and and both my parents both my parents but my dad was a lot more uh present within it my mom was a lot a lot more uh she would live in nature be part of it or whatever but my dad would bring us to nature and take us on hikes and yeah. camping and whatever so yeah so now that you've uh, now that you've stepped out you've you've moved away from ottawa uh you've now where, where did you move to in the end then in the forest would you say? in Tremblant, in in mont Tremblant, which is a resort area uh, very touristy, but just where the mountain is, but I was on the outskirts. So I was about 20 minutes, mm -hmm. half an hour from, from where the tourists go. Um, so I was, um, about an hour and a half, two hours north of Ottawa. Okay. Excellent. So, so now you've, now you've moved uh, to this new area, this new place and you, you you feel a bit more invigorated with life. You're starting to connect with yourself a bit more. Um, and in some respects, you know you're you're starting to face some of those challenges that that may have been coming up in your life in order to make that shift and and doing what you're doing so so what, what were the what were those things that you went through as you were starting to reconnect with your soul and you were you were finding yourself again well i had kids <laughs> <laughs> That kind of that kind of shifted a lot of things, and I had um, I was fortunate enough to have twins, and um, I, I, it just becoming a mother uh, brought me even deeper into my journey into really digging deep and connecting to who I am um, because I have two daughters, and um, at one point. Uh, from my background or whatever, I could see my daughters looking at me and just kind of seeing a shell uh, of who I am. And I just thought, you know what? That's not who I want them to know. I want to. I want them to know the woman that I am. I want them to know that the the the, the person that is behind the mother. And so I had to. I had to set myself on a journey to define that. Excellent. So what did you, um, 
I, I remember watching uh, the, the uh, David Attenborough's uh, like f fixing the egg, you know, where he he connected the the large like um like egg, and it's it's like the the human shell, like rebuilding your shell. So, what did you do to re rebuild your shell and, and start to? absolutely reconnect with who you are again as I said I it's so funny I I studied I went back to school I um actually that's kind of where I went back to studying in a calling that oh, it's always been there um that's kind of where I I I took a four-year course in energy in understanding um how to read it how to understand it how to you the whole I studied for four years under a shaman and um, and learned and learned and learned and absorbed and and he was yeah. another mentor um, that that was amazing in in helping me find depths of myself that that I would never have found had I not studied with him. Yeah. So, so sh shamanism was a was a big shift for you in your life in terms of understanding oh, your God. energy and the energy of others. Um, yes, I, I personally think understanding our energy, our own energy, is more important than understanding others in a way. Yes. Um, because before we can understand others, we need to understand ourselves, don't we? But what yes. what allowed you to to um, understand that? Then what was it? What was the big things and learnings there? Uh, you know what? Because I chose to dig in. Um, when you're when you're studying your own energy, it's 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 a journey into seeing your deep dark secrets and your deep dark. Yeah. Uh, it, it's not a fun journey because the, I I did have a lot of baggage. I did have a lot of um, things that needed to be cleaned up and needed to be um released and removed and and so on and so forth so i think i think that that um studying taking that course and and digging in was a choice that i did and and i i got absorbed in it like it became my life yeah. uh my life's purpose my life's like it, it just took over my life in those four to five years that I was in the, on that path, I I dug in because I really wanted to to connect to who I am. So, what what were some of the other learnings that you you obviously went through along your journey to connect with your soul and and um, you know that uh, that allowed you to really connect with that nature because obviously um, nature was your big mentor, like you you mentioned. Oh, yeah. um, so, tell us a bit more about that. For me, I think everything that I studied with every course that I took, uh, whether it was uh, business co uh, coaching or, or whatever, everything that I studied in through with any like a person, mm -hmm. I had to bring it back into nature to understand it. That's how I process things. That's how I digest things. That's how I, I understand it. Um, and I always say, for me, and and you've heard me say this, Andy, where it's like for me, the, the nature is a is a the connection to the universal soul. So I always had to bring because I question everything. I don't accept very much at face value. Yeah. Um, so so when when. Uh, a, 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 a person teacher uh, would give me some knowledge or whatever, I'd always bring it back to nature and say, you know what, how does that fit in? How does that fit in with who I am? And and how does that um, become part of of the, the human journey that I'm on? Um, because, because and, and the life journey, because to me, nature and life is the same. I, I'm, I'm part of nature. It's part of me. And so I had to bring it back to nature every step of the way. I would not yeah. have learned as much from my courses that I studied with people yeah. had I not had the, the nature to help me absorb it and help me make sense out of all of it and make sense of myself because it, yeah. that's kind of where I connected uh, the human world with m my world and understanding myself. Yeah, I love it. So 
looking at looking at um connecting with nature how did you connect with nature in a way that allowed you to to transform your life and in, in regards to building that shell again was this for me pardon was there any specific things that you did in order to to, to oh, make there, there are change. lots of things. I have a lot of rituals or a lot of, of ways of um, every morning I take a walk. Uh, it's yeah. it's a necessary part. It's where rain shines, snow, cold, hot, hot, it doesn't matter. I always go. And sometimes it's a shorter walk. Sometimes it's a much longer walk. Some days I can take, take a like a couple of hours or whatever but some other days i just have like five minutes but i have a need to be in the presence of nature every single day and and that's that's something that um i know like don't get me wrong there are moments like if i'm life happens I, I have to run right left and center to go for my kids or for for different things um I've integrated nature in it. It's a necessary part of my day. So whether it be through a drive uh, or through nature has to be in my day. Uh, like it's, it's, I always say nature is as much a part of my life as I, as breathing. And it's, it's, it's somewhere I live in it. Um, it's part of my everyday and, and even, um, for me, a drive in the city is stressful, but send me out in, in Timbuktu, uh, in the middle of nowhere. And I, that's where I'm, I'm, I'm at my happiest. So, so, and it doesn't matter whether I don't care that I don't have, uh, electricity or running water or whatever. Um, I like it, but I don't, I don't need it. And, um, yeah. I think that's where, uh, it, it, there's recognizing that that's a primary need inside of who I am uh, has been um, part of the journey as well. Excellent. Would you say there was a defining moment then, a defining shift that really was the moment when you felt like it all came together in regards to your, your training in shamanism, your connection with nature, and allowing that wisdom in regards to nature's wisdom and the shamanism to come together well, was there that big, big moment it's yeah, yeah that's exactly where i was going i think because i i write I, I i've always had a journal and i've always written and through to me even when i go for a walk or whatever i i i often bring especially if i'm going for a long one i often bring a backpack with a, a, a pad and pencil and paper uh, and um i i write so yeah. to i think the the defining moment was um when i started writing about it when i yeah. when i started writing about it i i was finally allowing myself to share a part of who I am with others, um, which to me, I, 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 I just thought everybody was like that. I just thought, I didn't realize um, that, that people would value that because I didn't, it was such an, an integral part of who I am. So it was like, I never questioned it. I never, even through this whole journey, I didn't even add those two together because nature has such an underdog um, yeah. uh, energy. Um, people have have a way of of seeing it on a very surface level, and so I just never thought that nature had much uh, value in the eyes of people until <laughs> until I started writing about it, and people were saying, "Wow." And it's like, really? <laughs> you get what I'm writing about? And and, and yeah. I think that's when it started being, um, th that shift started happening of, wow, yeah. okay, that is my calling. That That is, and, and I've always, even people that were I was talking with, I've always talked like this. I've always shown up like this, but I just never shared it in a very public way. So the more I started writing, the more, 
um, it started uh, taking a different uh, different journey, taking me on on my own personal journey of sharing that. I uh, love it, love it. So, if you would, if you, were, I know there's so, there's always so many things that we can pass on to others. Yeah. You know, as we've gone through our journey, we've learned so much, we've grown in so many different ways. But if if you were to if you were to give one thing to the people in the audience watching or listening or even what even coming back later to check out the recording what would be that one thing that you that would help them connect with their soul so that they can find their deeper purpose hmm one thing <laughs> <laughs> like as you're saying that i'm thinking of this 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 um for me to connecting uh, uh, and i'll use the example of nature nature has a lot of the same organism uh, there's a lot of the same tree there's a lot of the same branches or the same same um grasses or whatever but every single one is unique and i think i think that's where that I, I, to me that's where the 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 the, when we start connecting with our soul, it's when we start admitting, it doesn't matter that, and that's where I was saying in the beginning, I'm just a very ordinary woman that, that wants to help people realize how extraordinary that is. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's, um, nature is all about that. And so the more we start owning how we're all human beings, we're all living beings. Yeah. And when we start seeing how unique we are and how special we are and how we're all part of the same tapestry of the same journey, even if we're, we're part of a, a, of a different place in the tapestry, we're all part of the same one. So, so realizing how unique each one of us is and how essential we are in in this tapestry i think that's that's what and that's what i've i'm learning from nature and that's what i'm sharing in in my blog posts and on the book that that um yeah. that's uh that came out uh, this week which the 365 ways to connect with your soul and in that one i'm sharing um a little bit of how i connect with my soul that's kind of the the, the book that i share a little bit uh, i have three um pages in the book that are uh, my rituals how i connect with my soul through nature through walking in nature yeah. and and i'm actually working on my own book uh my, for my for myself which is a journey to your soul a walk in the forest yeah. and uh this is this is a little bit of the, the plan of it and it's all mapped out and the chapters and so on and so forth so it's it's all it's all a journey so as as the time goes by that's what i would tell people it's like yeah and let yourself recognize how unique you are and how special and and necessary you are excellent excellent so now so now for the whole journey You've gone through all that pain and, and all the trials and tribulations. Um, you've had that defining moment that, that allows you to feel more happy, successful and content within your life and allowed you to truly connect with nature and really see and feel what it is all meant for you. So who would you, how would you describe yourself today after going through all that journey? And, um, you know, as you see yourself today, how would you see yourself and describe yourself? How would I do that? That's a good, uh, actually today I would say I'm at peace with who I am and I can, I think it's now it's a pleasure to show up, um, and, and, and join in the conversation, uh, with, with others. It took me a long time to, to be comfortable and, and show up as myself anywhere. Um, I had a lot of, of my own issues to deal with and, and it's through nature that I, that I learned to, um, recognize 
my own self-worth, my own personal value, regardless of what happens in my life, regardless of what I'm going through. And I think that's that's what I would say today is I'm, at, I'm in a space where I can finally recognize my own self-worth and my own personal value. Excellent, excellent. And finally then, moving on to the final closure of the show, why, why do you do what you do today? Why do you pass this message on to others? What's important to you in that? Oh my God. <laughs> For me, I, like, I just think I, and I've written a meme about that. It's like nature has a voice. We just, we've forgotten how to listen to her and, and listen to ourselves. She's, she's like, she's got so much knowledge. She has, and I, and I speak of her as if she's a person. Yeah. Um, nature is such a, She's a wide open book and, and listening to nature, we can listen to ourselves even deeper. And if I can help one person connect to who they are through, through learning how to listen to themselves through nature, um, that'll be, because the more we understand how to connect to who we are, and the deeper we connect to who we are, the deeper our connection to nature becomes, and and it becomes a fluidity because nature is obviously having a bad rap right now and having a lot of difficulties. Yeah. And I think it's it's um, it's a, a a testament of how we treat ourselves. And so the more we connect to who we are through nature, I think it's going to become um, this yin yang and this fluidity and and this this infinity loop where it's the energy is going to flow a lot better. Definitely. And when you said that, I was just thinking, um, like, so, so the ebb and flows with nature, the yeah. ebb and flows with our minds, our bodies, our souls. And as we understand our own journeys, you know. Yes. Um, yes. So where can, exactly. we, where, where can we find out more about yourself? Well, for now, this year, I'm on a, a journey. 2015, I'm on a journey to writing my own book, like I said. So, But I will be launching uh, a program for in 2016 where um, if you want to learn how to connect with me, I'm at NicoleLevac.com. That's my name, .com, and everything's there. Um, and the, the, the book that just came out is on there. Uh, the, uh, the, um, pretty much all my journeys, all my, my products are on there. So, so when you, if, if you want to follow my journey and I'll be announcing my new program, uh, in 2016 and, uh, going from there. Love it. Love it. Hey, Art. Yeah, it's good to, good to see you out in the, in the, in the room as well. So one, one final thing, one final thing then, what, what, I know you've said one thing already, um, but what, what else would you say to leave people with in regards to connecting with their soul? Uh, it may not even be connecting with nature. It may be what you've learned in your practices of shamanism or, or other energy work. What, what, what other lasting lesson can you share with people? You know what? Time is your best ally don't make it your worst enemy mm -hmm. allow yourself to learn to wait and 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 that is probably um and and that is definitely from nature um yeah. and and i i see people wanting solutions yesterday and wanting answers so quickly uh, and everything comes in its own time and i would say yeah time is your best ally definitely just trust trust time <laughs> definitely and um <laughs> i think that's uh, that's a very good place to end it <laughs> you know and um there's always a hidden meaning behind these messages and uh, i thank you for that message today and for all of you for connecting um, to the to the show and connecting with your soul 
Um, as as Nicole has mentioned, you can find her on her website, nicolevac.com, and obviously you can follow her on social media. If you're you're you may be listening to this on iTunes uh, on a podcast in um, Blab itself, or even on YouTube. Whether wherever you're watching it, all the links will be below this video to connect with Nicole, um, so that you can connect more with yourself. So, what I'll do now is I'll open up the room to anybody that wants to ask Nicole questions uh, about how you can connect with your soul. Um, because as I said, the first part of the show is, is me talking to Nicole about her journey. But now it's up, it's uh, open up the room for you to ask your questions. So I will, I will leave it there for a moment and I'll ask you to join. <laughs> So, so we've got a, a, a little bit of a, a, a of a, an, an audience. Yeah, so we've got a very nice audience. audience yeah. And what I will say is, um, I usually say this during the break period. Um, I often help people write business stories for their their business and their brand, and this is a story that allows them to connect with who they are and what they do, and at the same time allow people to connect with them or see them as it may sound cliche but heroes in their own business or in their own life i like to work with spiritual businesses entrepreneurs um, people who really want to make a difference in the world um, it's a very holistic approach but if you're interested in writing a business story for your brand and your product uh, then i'd love to connect with you and um, i'd love to i'd love to work with you um, we haven't got anybody jumping into the show at the moment. Actually, we do have Art, so we'll we'll uh, we'll get Art to join in and uh, ask his questions. <laughs> Hi guys. Hey, hey Art, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Um, I I got in here late. I wish I had been here sooner to hear you and Nicole talk about this notion of the entrepreneur's journey. Uh, the journey to your soul is very a very powerful idea and. Uh, can you can you summarize in like thirty seconds what that theme really means? Well, it's basically the journey. That's what I. That's it's basically my life story in uh, in how I connected to my soul through nature, um, and and the the how it started as a young kid, um, always with nature being present and uh, basically how I moved from the city to the mountains in the deep, dark uh, forest and, and, and just found myself there. And, wow, uh, that's, that's, that's powerful. And I guess, you know, each of us has the same opportunity, whatever path we choose, right, to... Uh, I know when I, when I lived in Manhattan, in New York City, um, it was... In an odd experience, but I didn't need to be out yeah. among the trees to feel a sense of uh, connectedness. It was almost as if those um, the, the, the 50, 60, 100 story buildings were in some way these giant monoliths that um, gave structure to the city and made me feel like I was connected to all the people in it. And maybe it's just New York. It's one of those those communities like Paris or London that, you know, I, I, I like you really appreciate nature, perhaps not as much as you do. But there's something about the city that uh, that I connected with. Maybe it was just me. But what, what are your thoughts on that? Was I tuning in to Central Park or was I, which is the only no, grassy area? In. Well, you were tuning in, and I, that's probably why I jumped into your blab this morning with three. It's like you were tuning in to that side of you that needs a structure, and mm -hmm. and that's that's uh, to me that's that's nature. People think of nature. I love nature. In in like the my definition of nature is the forest because uh, that's my reality. But nature is everywhere. Um, and, and that's what people need to understand. If you connect to um, that part of you through the structure of, of what the city is, you're, you're in the elements. Fire element is there. There's still sun in New York. I'm sure it is. There's there. Yeah. The, the, the air element is there. The earth element is there. The, 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 the elements are always present. 
so so you can't get away from nature people disconnect from it but it's present here's whether here's, they did it or not as you were talking it occurs to me because i i'm just i'm asking that's really a question <clears throat> about my connectedness to new york but i think i in listening to you the answer occurred to me and that's the idea that much of what i think about um in recent history connects me to the whole the, the sense of primordial you know that we as humans have always been in the in the state of our our biology our neurology you know we we have a certain way of behaving and that has not changed the things around us have changed so when i go to there's a there's a beautiful cathedral in los angeles it's uh cardinal mahoney's cathedral at a, uh, it's called our lady of angels it's a very modern cathedral. It's not like Chartres in France or anything like that. It's very modern. Um, it seats maybe 3,000 people, if not more. And when I go there, when everybody's reciting the same thing and all the voices are raising, rising in the, this giant basilica at the same time, or I go to a concert where everybody's holding up their iPhone, right, and the lights are let that sense of community and that sense of connectedness is the feeling that I get when I'm in New York, when the light turns green and the masses of humanity cross the street or I'm in central park and, and there's tens of thousands of people watching a concert. It's the concert's important, but it's being with those masses of people all. And it's not just the mass of people. It's because at that moment in time, we're all doing virtually the same thing. Right. It's whether it's in a cathedral, whether it's, you know, in, in the park at a concert. Uh, um, and that's that's an amazing sense of connectedness that I get. And I think I can draw a parallel to the sense of connectedness that I have when I'm sitting in an ocean kayak, you know, a mile offshore, just me and whatever is swimming below me and the expanse of ocean for as far as I can see. I feel a sense of connectedness to the earth. And so on the left, I've got connectedness to the earth. On the right, I've got connectedness to, to my fellow man. Yeah. And I, I thrive on both of those things, I think. That's why I like New York. Thanks for letting me talk that out. <laughs> I thought that was awesome. No, I love it. I think. And it, it's such a, well, look at the parallel that, that and, and sorry, Andy. Did, that's all right. That's all right. No, that's why I was just when I was just thinking about that. I was just thought exactly what you said earlier. It was all about that listening. Um, I think a lot of people when they're in the city, um, they're in this busy environment and are not really listening to what it is that's there. You know, um, so it doesn't matter where we are. For me, it doesn't matter where we are. But when we yeah. when we listen, we can connect and be present. And and uh, it doesn't matter whether we're in the city or or in the country. Um, but it truly allows us to connect with our soul. You know. So. And it, and it's it's and that's what I was saying. It's a parallel. Look at and art your 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 image of the city. Bring that same image and take that and go into the nature into into nature. If you if you start looking at nature, is all about everything coming together. It's not people. It's the energy. It's the same. So it all it's the same thing. But that's where the human lives, is in the society in, in, in York or whatever, where, where they're, and they feel that and they feel alive. What if they bring that and go back in nature? That's, <clears throat> yeah. it's the same thing. And, and, and th when we start connecting with this, this communication that happens with this energy that that flows from being present in this in this unity in this and that's what i was saying at the end of the the blab with with uh, andy it's i think people start when they start recognizing how unique each one of us are and how we are all part of the same tapestry it doesn't matter where we are in this tapestry um, that's where the, 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 the unity can take place. The interdependence can take place. The, the, this, this community and this collaboration and cooperation and all, and everybody can start helping each other and moving like nature into a, into a, a way 
that that helps you to grow that helps you to strive and 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 go on to the next levels you know i think that it's it's you know i came this morning i did a blab on empathy and and um when i your your theme soul journey to your soul um you know being empathetic with our ideal prospect out out there um is is perhaps not as important as first being empathetic with ourselves, right? Getting in touch with ourselves, and and I think when I'm in the city at that concert or in the cathedral or wherever I'm at, where there's people that are doing exactly the same thing at the, exactly the same moment, they are that's empathetic, that's empathy because I know what they're doing and I'm doing exactly the same thing. When I go to the forest or or sit on the ocean in a kayak, I'm. That, that might shift to intuition and I'm, I'm really having a sense of my place in the world. Right. And, and, um, or maybe it's empathy. I'm having, uh, I'm having a moment, how, how, how I'm empathetic toward the world and what it provides me and, and provides me a place on this rock to be right. And, and although I'm alone when I'm in the forest or on the ocean, I, I have a sense of my connectedness, connectedness to it. I know my role, yeah. And I know its role and it's absent people in that conversation. And it's kind of nice to know that um, I'm nurturing that, that sense of connectedness to nature. Um, and, and to go to what Andy would probably say is that I'm building the narrative of myself as the hero <laughs> and, and nature as the mentor on my journey. Right. And, and as I, I visit nature, or I think about nature, or I look at the plants I have here, the mint and the lavender I have growing here just in front of me, you know, that's nature. And um, if nature is my mentor, then on the journey, nature is, is there to show me how to wrestle the alligators into the ground in the swamp or avoid them altogether uh, yeah. to perhaps model nature. Um, nature is a gift, right? And, I'm using Andy's terms now, you know, the, the gift that the, the mentor gives to me on my journey is that keep it simple. Wow. Don't complexify this stuff, right? Life is that doesn't have to be complex. Nature no. doesn't treat life like it's complex. There's a lot of complexity there, but um, if you keep it simple, yeah. um, you can navigate life in a, a much more placid way, which perhaps I know that's my goal. Yeah. I was just well, I always Pardon? Oh, I was just going to say is um, this we have come towards sort of the end of the show because I usually try to keep it to 45 minutes for the recording but we'll keep the yeah. conversation going in the in the room but I will just say uh, for those of you listening to the recording thank you for thanks for tuning in listening uh, we are live every week at 8 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time which is 3 p.m. Eastern Time uh, you can watch it live on Blab or you can obviously catch up on the recording on iTunes or podcast. Uh, so thanks for tuning in today. You've been watching uh, The Entrepreneur's Journey and today we've been talking with Nicole about the journey to your soul. Uh, so thanks for tuning in and we'll see you again soon. The Entrepreneur's Journey. Create your empowering business story. Interviewing successful entrepreneurs from around the world to share their inspiring journey to success. Tune in live every week for your weekly dose of inspiration. Visit www.theentrepreneursjourney.tv for previous episodes.